Hello everybody here at the Tech Open Air Festival 2015. I'm here with Dirk Alborn from Hyperloop Transportation Technologies. Welcome, Dirk. Thank you. What did you do before you uh, entered this room? <laughs> I just had my presentation. How did it go? Um, I hope great. Uh, you have to ask the people that attended. So. <laughs> so what are you telling during your presentation? What, what's the main message that you want to let come across? So, um, well, we go over a brief, I think, I think it's brief, uh, a, a brief explanation of the history of Hyperloop and um, explaining really what it is. Um, after that, we explain how we are doing it. Mm. Um, obviously, we have a very particular model, so that takes some time. Mm. And um, at the end, we give an update where we are and uh, what are the next steps. Yeah. So what is Hyperloop? Because you're also the CEO of Jumpstarter uh, Incorporated in Los Angeles. You are born actually here in Berlin. So how uh, came Hyperloop uh, to, to life? So, well, I'm an entrepreneur. And um, when I moved to Los Angeles, I was part of an incubator, a non-profit incubator that was funded by NASA. But um, the model worked really great uh, initially. Um, I came at a moment where you know, they were really struggling. Uh, obviously, a non-profit incubator has a lot of disadvantages towards uh, all the for-profit incubators that are now in Los Angeles. So we were looking at a new way. We wanted to solve um, the issues that the companies were having, and we came up with um, the concept of Jumpstart Fund, so a crowd-powered incubator, a place um, where you would actually use the internet to build a company. So you would build a community around your idea or your technology, and um, thanks to your community, you will get the ideas, insights that make your company better. Mm -hmm. So from there, uh, you saw Hyperloop envisioned by Elon Musk, but you're not attached to him or his organizations. This is your own initiative. So you developed it further. Elon, um, Elon proposed the concept of the Hyperloop. Uh, he said that he didn't have the time to dedicate to it. He was busy with uh, SpaceX and Tesla. But and he registered the trademark. He was smart enough to do that. Um, yeah, of course. I mean, he's, um, you know... He, he, went, he went ahead and uh, proposed the project. We then went and um, reached out, got the permission to put it on the platform, put it on the platform. The community actually was overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, they, um, you know, we have two buttons. So one says, you should do this. And then um, the, other, the other option actually says, I want to do this. And so many people were clicking that they wanted to do this. Mm -hmm that it was just overwhelmed. So what we did is we created a small team, we created the company and then said, so now everybody who would like to be part of this company mm -hmm. and work in exchange for stock options, mm -hmm. please apply. We had more than 200 applications, um, ended up with a team of around 100 engineers mm -hmm. and started working on our feasibility study. We, 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 did, we did a couple of um, partnerships with UCLA, for example. Uh, ANSYS, which is uh, 3D mm -hmm. simulation software, so we got several millions worth of licenses there. Um, finalized our feasibility study at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. By now we are more than 400 team members, several industry partners, mm -hmm. and we're getting ready to build uh, next year. Yeah. So now on the how, um, I think there are two elements. Uh, you want to, way, to change the way how transportation works, but you also want to change the way how entrepreneurship works. So first about transportation. What is now wrong, in your opinion, with transportation? Do you like to travel? Yes, of course. Do you think it's wrong? Uh, I mind the waiting, yes, and the hassle, yeah, of course. So every time I'm in an airport, I think this does not need to be like this. So, you know, from the moment you arrive to when after you land and you stand, I, mean, I remember I came back from Dubai and I was standing on the, literally for 40 minutes, mm -hmm. looking to see if my luggage arrived, just mm -hmm. to find out that someone had actually took it down before I arrived mm -hmm. and put it in some corner. It's 2015, 
right? I should know if my luggage is still in Dubai. Mm -hmm. I should know where it is. It should know where I am. That's just an example. Um, if we look at how we make money, right, in transportation, mm -hmm. a ticket might not be the best solution. Mm -hmm. There's actually, um, in the rail industry, there's not one company that makes money with mm -hmm. passenger transport. Mm -hmm. They're all subsidized by the government. So it costs us tax money. There's no business model. Um, they don't need to think about it. Because but they why does it exist then? And why has it existed for such a long time? Because people see it as, uh, a, you know, as a right. It's like a street, right? Um, they say, we need it. We need, to, um, we need to have trains. So they get subsidized by the government. But in real, there are ways to make money. Mm -hmm. And obviously, a startup and um, you know, going at those things with a new mind mm -hmm. uh, can solve those things, especially when you use elements like crowdsourcing. Mm -hmm. So we have thousands of people in our community that are helping us solving these issues and helping us figuring out what are the issues. Mm -hmm. So um, And even our industry partners and um, the companies we are talking to, they you know, they, they recognize that it, mm. it's a problem. Yeah. We're becoming more and more people in metropolitan yeah. areas and yeah. we need to move these people. Yeah. So, I mean, let's get real. We're talking about a tube at 800 miles per hour. How is that going to change the way how we think about entrepreneurship? Where's the link there? <laughs> so, well, <laughs> Hyperloop itself is an amazing project. But... Um, the way it's happening, so with all these people saying, hey, wait a second, why isn't government funding some research to find um, a better way mm -hmm. than spending $68 billion for a high-speed train, for example, in California, the slowest high-speed train in the world. Um, you know, so now people are actually stepping up. If you think about that you can, f you can find your girlfriend online, you can um, order food online, you can get your shirts, cleaned online, but when it comes to creating a company, it's still you and a buddy with a beer in a bar somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, you start working, after six months you realize that actually nobody wants your product mm -hmm. because it was only you that thought it's cool, or you find out that advertising wasn't the right business model. Mm -hmm. um, all these things, when you use a community, can actually um, you, c you can solve these issues mm. because they're going to tell you that your idea stinks. Mm. They're going to help you find a better way. And you also give them equity, 10% in total for everybody contributing? So, no, the, the team members are receiving stock options and that's just like any startup company mm. that uh, you know. So, basically, we're the largest startup company in the world right now, uh, depending on how, do you, how you define a startup company. Um, for, the, f um, for the community, we have 10% of the future revenues mm -hmm. that are being divided in the community based on their participation, that's mm -hmm. correct. And is it a very conscious choice? Because it's, I mean, it's large, it's huge, it costs lots of management time, right, to, to do this in, in a good way. Management time for? Having all these individuals working on small parts of the project? Well, I mean, so first of all, the teams are very self-sufficient, but we also we're building the tools necessary in order to do these things. There are a lot of challenges, no doubt. I can um, imagine. <laughs> and we have done a bunch of errors, mm. but we also figured out what, what does work. Mm. And um, at the end, I think, as you can see, we are very successful, it works. Um, we are more and more moving into directions that we can really streamline, that we figure out this is the right way. It's, um, you know, it's a big undertaking in itself, if you want so, but it's the right one. Yeah. Because uh, we, are, you know, we have the best people in the world. You can't buy them. You can't buy people that are passionate about what you do, mm -hmm. that work on, the thing, uh, on, on things without mm -hmm. getting paid. Like, uh, we don't even have that issue. Yeah. If I, every time I think about anybody else who needs to do this w or would want to try to do this with money, um, I feel sorry for them because it's so large. I mean, you have to think about um, pylon construction, tube construction, vacuum pumps, um, station design, right? I mean, you're, it's, it's such a large project. You have, there's a lot, ton of safety issues, uh, a lot of development from uh, um, 
electrical to software development mm -hmm. to uh, engineering. We ha you have uh, design work. We are working with the top design interior design firms mm -hmm. in the world in transportation, and everybody's part of the team. So we really have the best team possible because, um, yeah, you can't just buy those things. So you're almost now ready with a feasibility uh, study. You have this eight kilometer track in the Quay Valley where you're actually going to build the first tube. You're preparing uh, a public offering. Can you already disclose when that will be? So the feasibility study was finished last year, right? That was a point where basically we, until then, we didn't know if it was possible. So in December 2014, we announced it's possible. And um, we were still deciding on the final solutions because there's always, normally you always have a couple of solutions, mm -hmm. a couple of ways you can do a project. Mm -hmm. So um, now that we defined that and we know where to build it, we're going to move forward. And um, obviously now the next step is raising the funds. So the public offering is one part of that. Where the public offering is really, you know, it's different than what you normally understand under public offering. For us, the reason is, is that um, this project was born by the crowd, by the community. Mm -hmm. So in order to give them the opportunity to be part mm -hmm. of it from the beginning, mm -hmm. we have to do a public offering. In America, you can't invest into a company mm -hmm. if you are not an accredited investor. So if you don't own at least a million dollars worth of assets or you make more than $200,000, mm -hmm. you're not allowed to put money in. So that would mean that our company, um, now that we are ready to build, venture capital firms, institutional investors can come in and can make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But the people that actually stepped up and said, hey, no, let's do this, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be able to. So it's the only way for us. And when will it be? Um, 2016. Okay. And um, to, clo to wrap up this, 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 this conversation that we had, I mean, what is now for you, when will this project be a success? Because lots of people still think it's not going to happen. It is financially not sustainable. It is technically too hard. When do you think it will actually be on an industrial scale, a commercial success? I mean, first of all, those people don't know anything, right? I would love to talk to them because uh, it's actually, it's a business model, mm -hmm. okay, and obviously we have done the calculations and we have more than 40 people on the financial team. Um, from a technical point of view, it's old technology, if you want so. It's technology that's existing. The other day I saw a robotic butterfly. I mean, if anybody has doubts that we can create a tube, uh, create a low-pressure environment inside this tube and move uh, and make levitate a capsule and move it, Sorry, but um, there's a lot of technical hurdles, of course, with, with certain things, but then they're, they're, those are not the really the difficult things. The difficult things is more, uh, are regulations. The difficult things are convincing a government in America or in Europe to start putting down hyperloops. Um, and even there, there are solutions. We already have more than 20 city pairs that are interested in having the first hyperloop. Mm. So. There are other countries that are way more, that are, that are easier to work with, so that are open to innovation in these areas, and um, that's the right way to go. So, in my opinion, it's already a success. First of all, I think it's a success that people stand up and um, want to participate to make a difference. I think that the quality of our industry partners shows that we are not just a couple of people in a chat room, but we are, you know, they're top engineers, people that have been working on the Manhattan Project, the Mars Rover. I mean, we have really top, top professionals in our team. And, um, you know, if, if one person tells me, you know, this is not doable, and you have 400 people that tell you it's doable, I don't know where, who you think is wrong, but um, in general, I think it's a success. We're moving things forward. We're talking with amazing people. We're, um, you know, we're getting ready to build. Mm -hmm.